Uh, welcome to our fully customized Douglas webinar. My name is Gary O'Neill. I work out of our Port Orchard office, and I am responsible for all of Mason, Kitsap, and then Pierce County on uh, this side, uh, or they might say the north side of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Joey Harmon, who we'll be uh, speaking to here in a moment, he is responsible for the rest of Pierce County, into King County, down into Thurston County. But we certainly appreciate you taking the time and being with us today as busy as we all are. And as I said at the outset before we began, uh, we will do our best uh, to make the most of, of this time that you have given us. Uh, a couple things to begin with, maybe the most important thing I'm gonna tell you to start is the Q&A portion that Joey has already highlighted by means of the chat is uh, wide open to you. We wanna, again, accomplish your purpose today to answer every question if we can't do it. During the course of this program, we promise one of us will follow up with you before the day is done. But please do not hesitate to use that Q&A tab. Write any question as it occurs to you. And what we've found doing these over the last few months is it seems to work best to hold those questions in terms of the answers until after Joey has walked you through uh, this home, just not to interrupt the flow, so forth. But please be assured that if your question relates to a certain uh, room or aspect of the home, as we answer it, Joey will take you right back there visually. So it's as if uh, you know, you're right there standing in the home. And that's actually what we would have preferred to do uh, with you today. At March of last year, until then, we routinely had an open house. We were very proud of our construction, the craftsmanship of each of our homes. And we'd show homes in construction on demand uh, that weren't available even as, a, as an open house. Although pandemic protocols are rolling back, we're still not comfortable uh, asking our homeowners to open their homes. Uh, don't know when that's gonna be, but until then, we'll continue to attempt to compensate for you by doing these virtual tours. Uh, more and more of our homes as they become available and agreed upon with our homeowner will be filmed and then we'll put them on the website and then we'll schedule these as, uh, as often as we can to do it with you as close as we can get to actually being there in person. So of course, as you expect today is the Douglas. The Douglas are, is our best selling home overall certainly our best-selling Rambler. Why is that? Why is the Douglas the, the best-selling home? Well, there's a couple things unique about the Douglas. Uh, beginning with, it's got a three-car garage on a Rambler. It's got a tremendous great room. Uh, the great room often exceeds expectations in terms of its ability to be used as, as an entertainment uh, space. It's also got as a fully finished butler's pantry. And if you haven't seen the pictures of this, as Joey walks through it today, I think you'll, you'll no doubt be impressed. Cabinets above and below countertop, space for a refrigerator, freezer, double ovens, prep sink is standard. It's just a beautiful, beautiful space that allows you to take everything that you might've had in the kitchen on the counters or whatnot and put it in there. Uh, and just make that a, just a, a truly special prep area at the least. But beyond that, for instance, Joey will likely speak to this, bedrooms four and five is probably the most common architectural change on this hall. Folks, for a very nominal architectural fee, will take out that wall in the middle, put a door at the hallway entrance, and that becomes a great space that some folks have used for a playroom, They've used it for a workout room, craft room, whatever you want it to be. If you want to even have uh, the ability to exit and enter from that room, from the outside, we can put French doors there or a sliding glass door. So a lot of things about this home that really seem to check the boxes for uh, many families we've had the privilege of building with. As Joey walks through this home though, one thing we really want you to be cognizant of is, yes, this home has a lot of upgrades. We have every upgrade that any builder would likely have off you otherwise. But we don't want to be confused with a builder that pushes upgrades. 
we don't want to be that sort of builder for you. We're very good, we think, at listening and anticipating what you might want as one upgrade might relate to another or one architectural change might lend itself to this particular upgrade that isn't standard, then we'll suggest that, but it's gonna be based upon what we hear you say. So we have an upgrade list that we can send you if you wanna per peruse that before we even were to meet or revise your homeowner estimate at any stage, we're happy to do that. So one last thought on the Douglas, as with any of our homes, lots of standards. I'm not gonna come near what they are because we're very proud. A lot of folks come to us just based on the fact that we have so many standards that don't require an upgrade. But a couple quick examples, uh, shot carpet, lots of choices. But then what folks particularly appreciate is luxury vinyl plank or luxury vinyl tile, as some say. That's a lifetime warranty, waterproof, not resistant, but waterproof, scuff dent, stain resistant. It's great for animals. It's practically as bulletproof seemingly as any, any flooring can be. And that's going to be in all the wet areas. So as Joey walks you through this, see it in the foyer, kitchen, pantry, bathrooms, laundry room, utility room. We've got four standards. Rarely does anyone go beyond that, but we have all kinds of others available to you. Or if you want genuine hardwood or anything you need, uh, with little exception, we've got it. Uh, beyond that, we're going to prime and paint the home uh, on the inside, recessed canalized kitchen and great room, uh, central air conditioning, high efficiency. Actually, I have to correct that with the new code requirement. It's considered an ultra high efficiency furnace in your utility room, and then a heat pump hybrid hot water heater, uh, 50 gallon in your garage. Garage is fully uh, sheetrock and tape, garage door on the bigger uh, garage door side. Uh, Pine tongue and groove soffits, front and back covered areas. Even our covered areas tend to exceed uh, many, many, if not all of our competitors. So just a, a bit of a, a taste as to what this home has without even having to upgrade it. Last thing, and we'll get straight to Joey. At the end of this, uh, we're gonna ask you to rate us. We know that our success is based upon your feedback. So please be honest with it. If there's something we could have done better, please tell us that and we'll correct it for next time. And speaking of next time, next month, we're going to shift gears for a little bit and we're going to have a, a webinar as we did in uh, February. It's going to be uh, talk to the experts. So we're going to have a, a land expert agent. If you don't already have land, you'll have direct access to, to them. Uh, we'll have a planning and permitting specialist because a feasibility study and manages anything you want managed on on the land to get us uh, build ready, as well as one of our top rated uh, lenders uh, will be here to be able to ask questions of as well. So again, hit that Q&A tab. We wanna answer all your questions today. So enough about that. Let's get to Joey and walk through this beautiful, beautiful upgraded Douglas. Thanks, Gary. All right, let me switch this up a little bit right here. Okay, hey folks. Thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it. Give us just one second here to put this on. All right. Uh, Chris, if you would go ahead and screen share for us. And uh, while we're getting this queued up again, I know Gary mentioned it two or three times, but it's worth repeating again. Any questions you have at all, that's what the Q&A feature is. Uh, remember the Q&A is different from the chat feature also. So please, put it in the question and answer. We will answer your questions. If there's something we don't answer, uh, we're definitely gonna follow up with each one of our attendees uh, today after the meeting. So we will definitely get back to you and get all your questions answered. All right, so there we go. Let me actually take away my camera so that it's a little more full screen. There we go, okay. So this is uh, our floor plan page on our website. Um, something that we've mentioned in the past, and it's definitely true with every single one of these meetings that we do, these virtual webinars. Um, you have access to everything that we go over today. This is all on our website. Um, so what we're gonna do is go down here on the floor plan page to the Douglas. Click on that. And right here, you can see the standard layout. 
keep on going down. Here is our first uh, virtual tour. Now this one does have a number of upgrades, but nothing compared to what we're gonna go over today. And that is the fully customized Douglas. This uh, home actually, it means a lot to me personally because I actually helped design this. This was a client I had last year. So, um, and pictures of it are all right here separated in this customized Douglas photo gallery. So before we jump into this, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about the architectural changes because um, everyone that walks through this immediately has a lot of questions. There's been a number of changes. So I've had our team pull up uh, some layouts here for us. So first of all, uh, this right here is the standard layout of the Douglas and you can see that it's been mirrored. So everything is flipped to the right with the garage on the right. Most of the homes we build and the layout that's on the website shows everything like this exactly the same, but it's mirrored with everything on the left. Um, so this one, garage on the right, kitchen on the left. Now this is the standard layout. Now take a look at this. This is what the client did uh, with the plan. So there was a number of things changed. The biggest change you can see right around here, there is no more back covered area. Again, just looking back here, this big 32 foot wide covered area has been converted into indoor living space, making for an even more massive great room and kitchen. So going back here, you can see how the kitchen not only went further back, but it also went over to the left. You see this large bedroom number two. Originally, there was actually two bedrooms here. So again, looking back at this, it can be a little bit confusing without somebody to guide you, and that's what we wanna to do today. Instead of two big bedrooms here with two walk-in closets, this kitchen went up and it went over to the left. So instead of having two bedrooms, you had one extra large bedroom and a huge kitchen and huge great room. Uh, that is, again, it, it's worth having a, a conversation about to be able to understand exactly what's changed. Um, and Gary mentioned this earlier, one of the most common changes on the Douglas is in the dining room. Maybe you don't need three, four, five bedrooms. Maybe uh, you'd rather entertain your family. Maybe you'd rather have a sort of a, a sitting room or a very, very large dining room. So originally, you can see here there's a media room with double doors and a closet uh, separating this dining room, which, by the way, this dining room, the standard one is still roughly, I want to say, 12 or 13 feet. It's, uh, it's not a small dining room by any means. But take that wall out and you have a huge entertainment area here. So those are a couple of the main things I wanted to point out, but let's jump right into the virtual tour right here and we can really walk you through this. So let's pull that up there. All right, here we are in the customized Douglas. All right, I'm getting a, not sure if you guys are seeing that too. I'm getting a little bit of, flickering on my end not sure what that is hopefully that goes away but these little things happen sometimes all right so uh, this is again the customized douglas here's a good look at the kitchen and again with that covered area moved over and and removed so that normally where i'm standing you would actually be standing outside see this back covered area these walls have moved All right, so um, over here in the kitchen, just to kind of walk you around here. So basically when this kitchen was extended by roughly six feet, that meant that you got more cabinet space, more cab uh, countertop space over on this side of the wall. Uh, but everything over here, uh, this is the standard layout as well as this, uh, this length, this length right over here. I apologize, This uh, our website today is having a little bit of glitches. I don't know if you're seeing that on your end too, but I'll do my best to try to work around this. Um, so one of the things that uh, we always wanna point out in our virtual tours, there's lots of tools on here for you to use. 
to be able to walk through here. And one of the main things is all of these dots, we call these info bits. Now, when you click on these, you can see uh, basically if you had a question, that question should be answered right there for you. So you might ask, well, what countertops are these? Are these standard? Are they upgrades? Well, normally the first word that you're gonna see on the description is upgraded or standard. So in this case, this is an upgraded quartz solid surface countertop. Quartz, if you haven't had it before, uh, is an awesome product. It is uh, the most durable countertop that we uh, can do. Great for, uh, for kitchens especially, but uh, good for bathrooms as well. Um, and whenever you upgrade your countertops, your sinks also become undermount rather than a drop-in sink. Um, in this case, you can see over here, our client did a very, very nice uh, farm sink, this white apron front farm sink. Uh, that is one of, uh, especially when we start getting into to kitchen upgrades, the sink tends to be one of the most popular upgrades, I would say. We can also do this in a stainless steel, by the way, if the white is a little too white for you. Um, the cabinets, by the way, these are as well uh, upgraded cabinets and not just upgraded, but the design of them is a little bit different. If I take a step back here, I can show you. So most of the kitchens that we do uh, at the top where the crown molding is, most of the time we do a staggered uh, wall cabinet where uh, maybe above the microwave, it'd be a little bit taller. The corner would be a little bit taller. It'd be kind of a up and down, really beautiful staggered look. Um, but this client preferred a flat top cabinet. I think they're planning on putting some trinkets and signs and you know home decor things up above the cabinet. So that was their preference to have it nice and flat. So no problem there. Uh, we can do that change to the design. Um, our standard cabinets are a stain. So this is an upgraded style. That's a, it's a painted cabinet called, um, I believe it's called Glacier Gray. It's just a little bit of an off, off white uh, or off gray, really nice, beautiful cabinet. Um, all of the lighting that you see throughout here are all uh, standard lights. Those are standard hanging pendant lights. You can see a little info bit here. Standard lighting, standard recess can lights throughout the whole kitchen, and also over into the great room. You can see these are all standard lights. Now up here, they've added two fans. You see an info bit there. Uh, we would do the bracing and the electrical for the uh, ceiling fans, but the ceiling fans themselves are provided by the homeowner. But definitely we can do some ceiling fans like that. Really, really nice to add a little bit of character too. I like how they place both of these. Uh, again, as Gary mentioned, the, the most sought after home plan is uh, the Douglas because of this really, really beautiful uh, butler's pantry. This butler's pantry is like a second kitchen. When you take a look in here, you can see it's full uh, countertops and cabinets. You even have a small prep sink here. And on the opposite side, you have space that is uh, generally big enough for a freezer or a full second refrigerator. Um, another popular upgrade is to add uh, additional cabinets in here for a uh, double oven cabinet uh, for microwave or, or uh, we had a client doing like French style ovens, which is really beautiful. Uh, we can add cabinets in here for that. Um, it's worth mentioning, we are not a custom cabinet maker. Uh, there are limits on what we can do, but there's definitely a lot of things we can do. And I think that that's something that this home really, it brings that conversation up where when you decide to build a house, the next question is what house and what builder? Is it, is it gonna be a custom builder? That can get very expensive, also very time consuming. Or is it gonna be a semi-custom builder like us where it's much more affordable, it's a lot faster. Yes, there are limitations, but usually that's a good thing. <laughs> usually that's a very, very good thing. So circling back around here, again, just to get a good look at this kitchen. Uh, the kitchen and the, the butler's pantry are absolutely awesome. Um, again, because the client has enlarged this kitchen, 
Uh, it definitely is a lot bigger, but even the standard kitchen, as Gary mentioned before, the kitchen in the great room, uh, I wish we could walk you through these because they always, almost always surpass expectations. They're just absolutely massive and beautiful. So now um, I wanna point out another architectural change. When you look over here, again, originally there would be a back patio, a back covered area here and no longer. One of the things that they also wanted to do, and again, this is that question, do I wanna build a custom home or do I wanna build a semi-custom home like this? Uh, when I first met with this client, again, this was my personal client, uh, met with them over a year ago, um, he originally was going to go with a custom builder. It was going to be incredibly expensive. Turns out that Douglas had just about everything he needed except for a few things. And we were able to do, I would say, about 80 to 90% of the things we were able to say yes to. One of the things we could not do is he wanted this entire wall right here to be a multi panel glass. Um, he wanted it to be uh, one of those maybe four or even five, maybe even six sections of glass that would all slide into each other. Those are absolutely awesome. I've been involved in projects like that years ago uh, in some of my other trades that I did where we've done those before. But here at Koval, that's just a little bit too custom. That was just, it's not something that we do. So we brainstormed, we talked about it, and we came up with the idea uh, for the most cost savings and to get him essentially what he's looking for is we added a second six foot sliding glass door here with bracing here in the middle. And by the way, if you see a yellow dot, that usually points to an architectural change. So that's all explained right there in this little architectural change info bit. We couldn't give him this massive, you know, 16 foot wide or 15 foot wide glass wall but we were able to give him two sliding glass doors and that accomplished all of the engineering he needs in this upper wall. So basically he's planning on maybe a couple of years from now celebrating their anniversary of moving in. He might knock this little, uh, this little beam out and remove these two sliding glass doors and have himself uh, a full multi-panel sliding glass door put in here custom. And in that way, he gets what he's looking for, but he still was able to avoid spending custom dollars on a custom house for the whole thing when he didn't need to. So that was a that was an interesting turnaround for him. Um, up here, just getting into the main living spaces, uh, vaulted ceilings are standard on every Koval one story home. Um, this home has nine foot ceilings. So at the, the base of the wall to the floor, instead of being our standard, uh, I believe it's about 94 inches, it's basically eight foot, uh, we did nine foot ceilings. Um, something else that he did, and you can really see this when you start looking around here at these doors, um, instead of our standard height doors, he upgraded all of the doors throughout the entire house to be eight foot tall interior and exterior doors. Uh, that was a very big change. That was definitely something that's not uh, not cheap to do. But when you're walking around this house, uh, it is much more grand. Um, I think him and his wife were fairly tall people too. So they really, <laughs> they were excited we were able to do that customization by changing all of the interior and exterior doors to be taller. Uh, looking around here, you can see the LVT flooring that Gary had pointed out. I wanted to point out this little info bit here. This actually is a standard flooring. Uh, that is one of the most popular LVT floors that we have. Again, waterproof, scratch-proof, pet-proof, child-proof. It has got a lifetime warranty and it looks and feels, it's actually textured. So it looks and feels a lot like real wood, um, but it's, I, I would venture to say a third the cost and it's not gonna scratch and have to be resealed and restained and sanded and all those things. So basically, the starting line, when we, when we are looking at our homes, we start with carpet. Um, this LVT uh, would be in all of the wet areas as a standard, but throughout the great room, the dining room, the walkways, the bedrooms, the closets, we're starting with carpet. 
again, we're, we're giving people the uh, ability to, to be flexible with their budget. Carpet is much less expensive than LVT. Uh, but in this case, with this client, they extended the LVT virtually throughout the entire house. Uh, speaking of which, um, some of the little tools that we have on here at your disposal uh, makes it easy to see things like that. So I want to point out down here at the bottom left of the screen, you have three tools. Uh, this one is the dollhouse mode. If you click on that, you can actually look around this entire house like a dollhouse, kind of neat. And then the second button, view floor plan. So this kind of like what we saw on the, uh, the black and white web page, except for uh, it, it's upside down. <laughs> I've, I've asked for that to be fixed, but unfortunately it hasn't been able to be fixed because of the technology it's being used. But uh, the garage is right here if you have any questions, so it's upside down. Uh, but you can see the flooring, they've extended that LVT flooring everywhere. Um, and then in the bathrooms, instead of having this LVT, which is the standard in the bathrooms, they've changed it to a really beautiful custom tile floor. Uh, I believe it's a ceramic tile. Um, and you can see all of the bedrooms are labeled so it's easy to see what you're looking at. And then lastly, if you jump back down here, maybe just using the kitchen as a good example of this, um, we get the question all the time, well, how can I tell how big this space actually is? You know, I, you might feel like, well, I, I need to stand in this house to really be able to get a good idea of how big it is. Well, uh, when we are able to do in-person uh, site visits, again, we look forward to that day. Right now, this is the best we can do. And as far as it goes with uh, being able to see measurements, there's a button for that. Right here, measurement mode at the bottom left of the virtual tour screen. Click on that and you can see we've added conceivably every measurement you might need throughout this whole house. Just to give you an idea of the spacing. So, you know, maybe you have a, a dining room table that you just, you've had it in your family for forever. You don't want to get rid of it. Well, right here we got, I actually measured this dining room table. It's about nine feet long. You know, you could probably fit that in, in your Douglas. Uh, if maybe you have the same size dining room table. Um, so as you walk through the house, be sure to use that little measurement mode at the bottom left of your screen and get a better idea, especially if you have furniture that you love and maybe you don't want to try to replace along with paying for a home. Um, right here, now that we're kind of looking at the dining room, I want to point this out. I just, I love what they did with this space. So again, a uh, little architectural yellow info bit here. Architectural change, they extended the dining room. So where this break in the wall is, kind of getting this way, normally there would be a media room with a double door and a closet here. So the dining room would kind of end, you know, somewhere right around the end of this table. But they took that, uh, that wall out, they took the closet out. I like what they did with this little drop ceiling. Uh, other clients we've had have, have actually extended that vault. So that's, that's a little bit of a custom design uh, that you would talk with your uh, project uh, manager about when you're doing your layout review, what you want the ceiling to be. Uh, typically inside the bedrooms, the ceilings are flat, but extending that vault out, we've had clients do that as well. It's a personal, personal choice. But because they extended that out, now they have this nice little sitting area. You know, I, I can imagine my clients, they're such sweet folks. I can imagine him and his wife sitting here reading the newspaper in the mornings or something. Nice little uh, sitting room or reading room, whatever you might want to call it. Very cool. Uh, circling back around here, I, I wanted to point out some things with doors and trim again. I already mentioned that uh, they extended these doors and trim. So the, the doors are about eight foot tall. But also I wanted to point out that this is an upgraded door itself. You can see the little info bit here about the change to the eight foot doors. But it also mentions in there that the standard interior doors and trim, uh, they're actually a flat, uh, simple, I, very modest uh, flat panel hollow core door and they're not painted. That's the starting line. That's where we're getting started. We're really most people don't buy those. 
we just leave those in there just to give people the, the balance in the budget that they might need. It's good to have a little bit of flexibility. Um, something I want to point out too is when you get white craftsman doors like these, if you decide to do that upgrade, which most people do, it's a really popular door, um, they're actually painted. If you go to another builder and you pay for uh, white interior doors with white trim, almost every other builder are giving you primed paint ready doors. So they're not actually painted and neither is the trim. So that's a nice little difference here. Uh, Gary mentioned before, we are one of the only builders that does all of your interior painting as a standard. And that also extends to the white doors and white trim if you choose them. So all your interior painting is covered. All righty. Aside from that, let's, uh, let's check out some of these bedrooms. Walking around through here. Again, I don't know if it's doing it on your screen, but my screen, it's flickering black a little bit. So I, I apologize if you're seeing that. Uh, but getting in here, this is our first look at one of our bedrooms. Again, utilizing the view floor plan button. You can see we're right over here in bedroom number three. Jump back down here. So he's got a nice mounted TV right there. Most people put their bed on this wall. Just wanna point this out. Our standard uh, HVAC is something that I wanna point out actually, when you look at this room, you can see uh, ceiling vents. Now, two things about that really quick. Uh, most builders like us do not do a full electric HVAC system with air conditioning. Um, that's not a standard for most builders like us, but it is, it is with Koval. Standard HVAC with a heat pump, electric, fully ducted furnace, and air conditioning. Um, I've been living in Washington for about two or three years now. Originally, I'm from Florida. Everyone has air conditioning in Florida. I moved here to Washington and I couldn't believe no one has air conditioning. Uh, but I was very happy that it is a standard with, uh, with Koval. So that is one of our nicest standards. Um, and just having the ceiling vent. A lot of builders, they still put these vents on the floor. Floor vent, crawl space uh, venting. Um, I, I don't know if, if it's a cost savings, if maybe that's the main reason that it's done. But if you've ever stepped on a floor vent, you know the pain. If you've ever dropped your keys or something uh, down a floor vent, especially if you have kids, if they're throwing Legos down there, it's not fun. Uh, so all of our uh, homes, including our two-story floor plans, they have ceiling vents. We never do floor vents. Uh, popping back over here into the hallway, we can get a look at the bathrooms. So this one right here is the guest bathroom. Um, whatever countertop you get, it's the same countertop throughout the whole house. So you can see they have the same really beautiful quartz countertops in here. And I mentioned it earlier, they did a nice upgraded tile flooring instead of the standard LVT waterproof flooring. So if we actually step in here, you can see every, uh, virtually every bathroom that we do in our Koval homes has a private toilet room. So within here, there's the standard tub shower, and then the toilet is on the left. Also, we added a window. Almost all of our bathrooms have windows too that just, it lets some light in. It's nice to be able to have a window in your bathroom. These are standard lights here. Normally we would have a solid uh, pane of glass here, but our homeowner asked us to leave that off so they could do a nice picture frame mirror. So no problem there. Every time I walk through here, it reminds me I need to floss. So that's good for me. I should visit this page more often. Uh, and speaking of bathrooms, one of the things I wanna jump over to is the master bedroom suite that's over here. They've done some really cool things in their master bathroom. So let's, let's actually jump over here for a minute. Jump down into this hallway. On the other side of this door is the three car garage, beautiful garage, fully sheetrocked, garage door opener and remotes are included. Um, awesome, awesome, lots of space, big garage. Uh, walking around here through the hallway, this is a nice uh, powder bathroom and look what they did on the wall. So not only did they do upgraded, uh, upgraded countertops, 
and upgraded backsplash, they extended the backsplash on the entire wall instead of just behind the, the sink, which would be a standard. I thought this was a really nice design choice that they did. That was really beautiful. Coming around here, we actually have the laundry room. And if you step in here, circle around, you can see they've got room, plenty of room in here. Again, if you have any questions about spacing, measurement mode, about eight foot by, what do we got? Eight foot by six foot. Not too bad, enough room to fit some nice appliances and do your laundry. Also behind this door is the HVAC utility closet. So that's where the furnace goes, right there tucked away. By the way, that is a really nice thing, being able to have your utility right there. Most builders, they put it in the, uh, in the attic or in the garage taking up space. Um, someday someone has to service that, that machine. So it's definitely a good idea to have a designated utility closet. And that is also a standard on every Koval home. We never put our utility room in the attic or in the garage. It's always a designated spot, much, much easier for a technician to get to. All righty, so now let me just use our little floor plan right here. So we're standing right here and we're gonna walk right over here into the master bedroom suite. So here we are, beautiful, big, master bedroom. And you can see they also added a ceiling fan in here. So walking around through here, something really nice to point out. Um, one of my favorite standards with Koval homes, oversized windows, extra large oversized windows. These are the standard windows in every Koval home, um, whether it's the dining room or the bedrooms, the living room, uh, just about every window that we install is five feet tall. That's big. Like if you drove, just drive around your neighborhood, pretty much wherever you live, and you'll notice most people's, especially bedroom windows, are maybe three foot tall, maybe four foot tall. Um, five foot tall windows on every Koval home are, are definitely a nice standard. Okay, so around the corner here is the really uh, big walk-in closet can maybe use the floor plan view to see a better view of that. You can see it kind of juts to the left. Lots of room in there. That's, I, I would say, almost as big, if not bigger than the uh, laundry room. Big walk-in closet. See right around there. So let's check out this master bathroom. Now, the first thing you see when you walk in is just, boom, beautiful freestanding double slipper uh, tub. And that is a tub that we installed. I know on some of our virtual tours, there's uh, some custom tubs. This one right here is actually a tub that we offer. So this is a tub that we can install. Um, and that window is the standard window as well. So this is a big tub. That's like a six and a half foot long tub. So I think we did uh, modify this bathroom a little bit. I think we, we either moved this wall or maybe we minimized a little bit off of this vanity to be able to fit this big tub in. Beautiful, beautiful tub. That's one of my favorite personally. And you can see they did the tile on the floor. They also did a beautiful tile surround here for the tub, just in case there's a little splashes. And then walking around here again, uh, standard windows here. And you can see they're frosted. Uh, in case you're curious, um, Frosted windows are what most people do in the, uh, the bathrooms for privacy, and it still lets plenty of light in. We can do those clear as well. It's really up to you. There's no cost difference on that. Beautiful, big uh, bathroom. I love this bathroom. And then also, again, standard uh, is a, a, a private toilet room on all of our plans. And also, they upgraded the shower. So when you walk around in here, you can see Instead of the standard fiberglass insert shower, they changed this to a, a nice uh, custom tiled shower with niches. And I like the, if you can see that, these really beautiful, um, almost like barn style sliding glass doors. These are really, really beautiful. It's kind of, it's hard to, to get an accurate picture of this when you're standing in here, but that's a, about a five and a half foot wide shower. 
So plenty of room for you in there. Also, in case you're curious, this is the standard design to have this open. That's uh, the standard layout, uh, which it's no problem if you wanna add a door there. We've had a number of clients plan for things like barn doors um, or even a pocket door. I found out uh, recently some of our builder, uh, our, our friends that work for other builders don't do pocket doors at all. I guess that's, it's a little bit of a challenge to do pocket doors, but we can definitely do pocket doors at Cobalt. So yeah, that's a good look over there. Let's circle back over to here where we were before in the hallway outside of this bathroom. And I just wanted to point out this big second bedroom. On the other side of this wall is the oversized kitchen. Again, uh, originally when you look at the floor plan, this kitchen was moved over here to the left and there would be two bedrooms here, but they wanted the biggest kitchen and great room they could possibly do. So converting that covered area and then also eliminating that bedroom here to move the kitchen over to the right. And still you created a, uh, a bedroom number two over here that's almost the same size as the master suite, other than having a, a very large walk-in closet that takes up this corner right here. So this is a big old bedroom two. Again, same thing, oversized uh, bedroom windows, nice walk-in closet, ceiling vents, standard LVT flooring extended into these areas where it would normally be carpet. Just such a cool house. Bringing this back up over here. So we've walked through pretty much every single area. Uh, one thing I could point out too, if you jump back over here into the great room, looking at this, that is the thermostat right there, which is a smart thermostat, hooks up with Google Home and Alexa, which is a nice standard. And maybe you're looking around thinking, well, can my furniture fit in here again? Please make use of that virtual mode that measurement mode here, you can really see all the, the sizes in here and you can actually make your own measurements. So you click on the plus button. Maybe you're wondering, well, can I fit my couch in here? My sectional, can my sectional fit in here, right? You can actually draw these out. Pretty awesome. All right. Well, I, I hope you enjoyed this virtual tour. I, I think now's a good time to turn it back over to Gary. Uh, we have had a number of questions coming in. Some of them are in the website chat and some of them are in the question and answer. So I apologize if we miss any of them, but please, uh, we're gonna answer your questions now with Gary and any other questions you have as we're going through, please uh, mention them. Any, any other questions you have, uh, Gary, if you wanna pop back on and take it away, and I'll continue walking us through as you answer our questions, okay? Will do, Joey. Thanks for walking us through that so well. So let's go to the chat to begin with. We'll answer those questions for you. Uh, to begin with, Jennifer asks, can you place the Douglas on a daylight basement? Appreciate that question, Jennifer. We, I'm gonna say until two, three years ago, uh, we would uh, build a home on a daylight basement and we stopped. And the reason for doing that was we are not simply a, a semi-custom builder, but we, we found from experience that a daylight basement cannot accurately be determined, estimated in terms of cost until excavation. Someone might tell you otherwise, but from our experience, uh, we learned that uh, that was simply the case. And the problem with that is, with the in inability to estimate cost accurately, it uh, just put a couple of our homeowners in a terrible position of making it buildable was beyond their budget. So we don't want to be confused with a custom builder where it's just gonna be a wide open amount until really almost occupancy. So for that reason, because we could not accurately determine cost, even with the support of excavators or otherwise, we no longer build daylight basements. Are appliances included in your price? Uh, they are not. 
So the reason for that is we think it is to your advantage that appliances, a builder that includes them, is really only going to mark them up and limit your choices and include that in the base price you're paying. You're paying for those appliances, of course. Uh, we our base price does not reflect that increased cost, giving you then hence the freedom to choose appliances that you would want, and likely afford the uh, the uh, the benefit of looking for sales and otherwise. So you could think of it this way: no appliances on the inside, otherwise complete no paint on the outside. But coming back to just leaving Jennifer's questions for a moment, uh, Gary asked, if we paint the inside, do we paint the outside? We prime and paint the inside one of seven Sherman Williams custom colors. We'll even paint it just alabaster white if you don't like their most popular custom colors and give you the ability to come in before finishes to accent walls uh, yourself or you can do a two color custom paint upgrade with us. Coming to the outside of the home, again, related to paint, the hardy cement lap siding all the way around is prime but not painted. We can do a custom two color paint on that or you could have that done yourself. So we give you that option. Uh, is that sink, is that a sink in the laundry? Yes, indeed, a laundry sink can be added to most of our plans. It can be to the Douglas. Uh, for the laundry sink and the plumbing, it's currently $650 just to try to answer that question more carefully. Do you offer barn doors as an upgrade or a change? Yeah, barn doors are certainly a trend right now, Jennifer. And so if you want barn doors, we'll make it easy for you to do so. And again, we'll be conscious of the cost of doing so. How we'll do it, for instance, in this home, Sometimes folks would like to put barn doors uh, on the pantry, the entrance to the pantry. So what we'll do is we'll allow you at framing to maybe uh, add some more support where those barn doors are going to be ultimately. And then at the verge of, at a verge of occupancy or thereafter, uh, your barn doors by you can be installed knowing that that support is already there and you've taken measurements, pictures, what have you. Uh, to be able to, to anchor those uh, sufficiently. Russell asks, can you see the inside, can we see the inside of the garage? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, we don't have that by means of this virtual tour. Uh, we might be able to provide that by means of pictures otherwise within our resource tab. Uh, she rock and taped, the measurements are on the website, but uh, maybe we can accommodate that, Russell, by means of uh, an email uh, separate from this uh, virtual tour. And going back to the Q&A, uh, Brian asked, can the vaulted ceilings be converted to nine foot ceilings throughout the house? Absolutely. Nine foot ceilings then also include 42 inch uppers in the kitchen, but uh, that is a relatively common upgrade as well, nine foot ceilings that obviously elevate all the ceilings in the home. Uh, Gary uh, asked another question, cement pour is included? Absolutely, Gary. It is a three foot stem wall foundation included. So think of it this way, the handoff between you and us from site preparation to construction is the dig out. So your excavator, of which we have several uh, that we can recommend, they're your decisions, but we know them well, and they would reflect, we believe, well upon us if you were to hire any of them, but again, your decision. So your excavator would dig out the hole after the site visit with your project manager after permitted plans have been provided. And once that dig out occurs, then we come in foundation, forms, concrete, inspection, and begin the construction process. What if any other questions, folks, would you like answered? Let me look, it looks like we've got potentially another question over here. Oh, thank you, Russell. Are the homes built with a crawl space or is, it, is that an option? Absolutely. We do have interior crawl space access. We don't like exterior. We think it's a potential security issue, but 
for a nominal fee as an upgrade, we can do an external crawl space access. But uh, on this home, if I remember correctly, it's in the master uh, closet, uh, just a very uh, thin seam. It is hard to detect in the carpets as well as I think it's bedroom five closet. Uh, correct me if you think I'm wrong, Joey. Yeah, here's one crawl space access here. This is in the master closet. Oh, there you go. And they did the additional flooring, so nice. Okay, I'll go back to the question and answers. Can we visit the on-site standard home? Thank you, Jane. Uh, not at this time. Again, we're very, very sensitive to uh, the feelings and desires of our, our homeowners. Uh, this isn't obviously an existing home that's for sale that we're walking you through. Uh, this is someone's home. And uh, to this point, we have found, and no fault of anyone, however anyone feels and reacts to what we've gone through for the last over a year is certainly to be respected. But uh, we have found that folks are still rather sensitive to having anyone walk through even during construction and even with your mask on and even being vac uh, vaccinated. So we are being conservative in that way, just out of wanting to default to the respect of everyone involved uh, that is building a home, but we'll continue to do this to the best of our ability and hope to compensate for you. Um, Jane also asks, how about land survey and permit process you do? How much do you uh, take in the time and cost? Good question, Jane. So. If you haven't already asked, we've got uh, three, if not more, uh, feasibility to land preparation uh, sources that will get you to uh, recall uh, uh, having the, um, just forgetting the term here, but having uh, pour, uh, footings having been poured and construction having been completed or beginning rather. So that being said, just ask Joey or I, whoever you're working with, Jane, uh, and we will follow up accordingly and get you such resources. But that is entirely apart from the home as with other on your lot builders. What other, if any questions, folks? Will you ask or as Joey and I follow up or you can simply send us an email if anything occurs to you outside this virtual home tour, our webinar today. Go back to the chat. Uh, can it be built with the slab on the ground without the crawl space? No, uh, good question, but no, we, uh, we think that's an inferior uh, type of construction in our area. So it would be a raised stem wall foundation, uh, three feet. Thank you, Russell. One more check with the q and I think that's it. Joey, what, uh, what might you want to say in conclusion? Oh, well, you know, just thanks again for joining us. We're gonna keep doing these. Um, we miss doing our site visits, but this is still, even though it's not as good as a site visit, nothing can compare to being in person. Uh, this is so much better than a video. This is so much better than just a gallery of pictures. Um, and even better is, is meeting with us and having us walk you through this. Um, this is just, we're putting forth the best foot we can. Um, one thing that I will say, and I, I think I mentioned this before, um, making that decision of, am I going to buy a house or am I going to build a house? That's the most important question. But then the next question is who's going to build my house and what kind of house, uh, this particular virtual tour is just it's such a good example of where where we stand not being a custom builder we're not a custom builder we're a semi-custom builder this home shows really what are we capable of doing and uh being able to help you avoid the costs of a fully customized build i mean you're talking about no guarantees on time frames who knows how long it's going to be you might not uh, even know what your full estimate's gonna be until very late in the process. Usually custom builds are easily double 
or sometimes more, maybe even triple the cost of what we do. So if that's the question, can I get a Koval home? Can they do what we want to do? Uh, this is a really, really good example of someone who wanted a custom build, but was able to, to save a ton of money and still get a beautiful, awesome house they are so happy with by not going the custom way, by going with a semi-custom Koval home. They couldn't be happier. So uh, I, I think this is a really good example of that. Uh, but definitely, if you have questions about Maybe there's a house plan you're looking at. Maybe it's one of our other ones and you're curious, can we customize this, customize that? Please talk to me and Gary about it. Let's have a, a Zoom meeting or an in-person meeting where we can look at the layout at the same time, maybe at the same table. Uh, typically, we're able to do just about anything you're asking about, but those are complicated things. So we thank you for your interest in us. We wanna be able to build with you. Hopefully we can find a house plan that works for you and your family, maybe even with a few modifications. But again, we appreciate everyone here. Yep. Thank you, folks. Joey, if you want to give them the ability to rate us, see how we did today. But again, appreciate your time. Look forward to meeting you if you haven't already. We'll reach out with a phone call. But thank you for considering us for the uh, great privilege of building your family's home.